I've built quite a lot of remote controls for projects in the past, and this is because I want to have custom controls for whatever I build. There are mostly quite a few joysticks and buttons on them for various functions of the machine I want to control. It's been really useful to be able to send a custom data set for all of the controls, but I've still not found a radio device that's super reliable. I started using Bluetooth devices like the HC05 modules, but I found these sometimes randomly disconnected. Since then I've been using the NRF24 LO1 modules, which is what's in my OpenDog remotes. These are okay, but the range is limited and sometimes they drop data. There is a long range version of these available, which I use when I work with Mark Robot on his Auto Strike bowling ball project. I found that we could get the radio to reach the length of a 60 foot bowling alley, but it worked best with one long range version as the receiver and a standard module for transmitting. This was pretty random though and I ended up swapping a few modules out before it worked. <laughs> I also built a Wi-Fi remote with a Raspberry Pi in to control ROS-based robots. That involves either having some sort of Wi-Fi base unit nearby for both the robot and remote to connect to, or making an ad hoc network between the two. Then we're also at the mercy of a TCP or UDP connection. I can't find any other specific modules that would work reliably with an Arduino so I can build a custom remote or that I can shove arbitrary data into. Having a reliable low latency connection is really important. But when was the last time you heard that someone crashed their drone because the remote disconnected? Hardly ever or never, right? Surely there's a reliable radio solution here. Most of the standard hobby remotes use something called DSM. This stands for Digital Spectrum Modulation. DSM and DSM2 technologies provide users with pure digital control, providing an impenetrable radio link that's immune to interference. So that sounds like something we want. Six channel digital radio systems are available relatively cheaply from the likes of Flysky etc, but my OpenDog remote had six analog channels across two 3-axis joysticks and then some switches as well. If I want more channels than that then the prices tend to skyrocket, with 20 channel systems costing up to $2000, and even then I'm pretty much stuck with the sticks and switches provided on the handset. So what I really need is a DSM transmitter module I can send my own data into. Well that actually exists and it doesn't cost very much. Yep, it's the Hobby King Orange RX DSM2 compatible 2.4GHz transmitter module, which is compatible with DSM2 and DSM-X receiver modules, and it's currently reduced from $32.99 to just $4.99. This module is intended to upgrade existing transmitters which have a slot for it in the back, so it has a handy connector on the back of it. There are pins for power and also for PPM which is the signal you want to transmit. It supports up to 12 channels of PPM data. But before we can use it, we need to look at what PPM is. Most older style radio receivers have a socket to plug servos and speed controllers straight into. This signal is pulse width modulation, or PWM for short. This signal looks like a square wave with varying lengths of the signal being high to control the position of the servo or the speed of the ESC. The pulse lengths are typically between 1000 and 2000 microseconds. PPM is very similar, but instead of having a connector and a signal wire for each servo, there's just one wire with all of the signals on it. The standard appears to be around 500 microsecond pulses, with the time between the rising edges of two pulses being the servo pulse width we want to send. Each channel's value is sent on the same signal line one after the other, with a longer gap between the pulses to show where the start is. Looking at the PPM output of my receiver though, it appears the whole thing is inverted, with the signal being high most of the time and shorter pulses going low. I wrote some Arduino code to read six analog joysticks and generate the PPM signal. This is pretty easy, it's just scaling the values from the analog ins and using delays to make 500 microsecond pulses. The gap between the pulses is the servo PWM value we want minus 500 microseconds, so that the total time between two rising edges is the desired PWM value. I'm trying first with my pulses going from low to high as that seems to be the standard as far as I can tell, and I'm sending 6 channels of PPM for now with a longer gap between them to mark the start of the data. The transmitter beeps when I plug it in which means it's got a valid PPM signal. I paired this with a 6 channel PPM receiver, currently reduced to just 299. Well it looks like we have PPM on the output, I can see the pulse width changing as I move the sticks. However it looks like my pulses are now inverted and also around 300 microseconds instead of 500 which is what I'm sending. So I guess that means the transmitter is sending my values digitally and then the receiver is recreating the PPM at the other end. But before we carry on with that it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor which is Huel. 
Huel makes nutrition a whole lot easier. No tricks, no fads or fuss. It's just a perfectly balanced plant-based meal. It's packed with 27 vitamins and minerals and it's ready instantly. It's convenient and affordable and it's also part of my healthy eating lifestyle. Huel contains 27 essential vitamins and minerals, so it's 100% nutritionally complete. It's plant-based and gluten-free, high in protein but low in sugar and salt. Huel is made with natural ingredients, it's an easy source of fibre and available in 8 different flavours. I find I'm really busy with projects and I'm always on the go, so sometimes I need some extra energy in the afternoons. Huel helps me keep track of my nutrition goals while I'm on the go. I like the berry and iced coffee caramel flavours, but there's plenty to choose from. With your first order, you'll also receive a Huel t-shirt and a guide to get you started. Click my link in the description to get started with Huel today. We need some code to read the PPM so we can control our robot or whatever we're going to plug into it. This requires precise microsecond timing to get the exact pulse widths. So to achieve that, I wrote some code that uses interrupts. Whenever a falling edge is detected, it bookmarks the time, and when it sees the pulse again, it works out how much time has elapsed. Each time this happens, a counter is incremented so each of our six channels can be put into separate variables. If the gap is long, then it resets the counter because it's the start of the data. This seems to work pretty well, however I'm not that keen on reading the PPM signal because it means that the very fast pulses we're receiving are literally interrupting my code all the time. It would be better if we could have a receiver with some sort of data interface on it. Well, for a bit more money, there's a 12-channel receiver available which supports various serial protocols including iBus which there's an Arduino library for. This library uses a hardware UART serial interface on the Arduino which means it will buffer the data until I'm ready to read it into my code loop. The library says it supports up to 14 channels, however I can't get the setup to work past 10 channels. The rest just return zeros. So either the transmitter or receiver don't actually support 12 channels or the library doesn't. Using the library, I can now read 10 channels of data over serial at the receiving end. I've got 6 channels still attached to my sticks and the other 4 are just fixed values. So it looks like I can reliably send 10 channels of PPM and receive 10 channels of iBus with the hardware UART, which is pretty good. The plan was going to be to actually make this into a 20 channel system by first of all sending 10 values, then immediately sending a different 10 values, so I get 20 channels, reading the 10 values, and reading the next 10 values, and I thought that would work okay. Maybe we have to sacrifice the first channel as an identifier so we can work out which data set it is, but we still then get 18 channels out of a 10 channel system. However, this doesn't seem to actually work having tried it. I can send 10 channels of PPM, then a different 10 values of PPM. When I receive them, they all get jumbled up. It doesn't matter how much or how fast I read the iBus, the values from each data set get mixed up and I can't quite work out why that is. So what I thought I'd do to build a 20 channel transmitter, since the modules are so cheap, is just basically build a transmitter with two of these in and have two receivers. Just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lolzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. And thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project, all of this is printed in Pro PLA+. So here's the shell and the lid of the remote is basically twice as big as my open dog remote with twice as many joysticks. And those joysticks are these three axis ones you can buy for about 10 or 15 dollars on eBay. As well as moving in both directions the top also turns to get the third axis. There are four of these attached to the top plate and some switches and that of course fits into the bottom just like so. I've also got some toggle switches on the top there and one of those is the power switch. There's also a voltmeter so I can monitor the battery level. So all of those are wired in, they're set up as potential dividers, so each pot has 5 and 0 volts and the wiper comes out to the analogue ins. And I've put capacitors between all the analogue ins and a ground pin, which acts as a filter to get rid of any high frequency stuff that just gets sent to ground. If we power it on, we can see we've got a voltage monitor and we've got those beeps, which means that those DRX units are working and two of those are mounted in the back there with the aerials protected by the handle. So that seems to be alright. In the bottom we've got some batteries and those are three 18650s in a 18650 battery box. So that gives me around 12 volts. 
and I've combined pairs of switches into single channels. So if I press one switch, we get one value. If we press the other one, we get a different value. And if we press them both together, we get a third value. And when they're off, we get a fourth value, essentially. And I've done that with all of them in pairs. And that means that I can combine two switches into one channel, so that that means we use less channels up just for switches. Then on the Arduino code on the receiving end, I can just use if statements to work out which switches are being pressed. I've set this up so the bottom sticks and all of the switches occupy 10 channels and those are transmitted with one of the transmitter modules and then at the moment just the top joysticks are on the other transmitter module. And that means for most projects I only need one receiver module and I still get six analog axis and uh, what's that? eight switches which is pretty good it's basically the same as my old open dog remote now i do have a blanking plate here where i can put some additional switches onto that spare channels on the second transmitter module and those transmitter modules and the receivers also support telemetry so i could send back the battery level and various other things and display that on the screen in the future if i wanted to and so my receiver looks like two receivers basically attached to two different serial ports on the Arduino and some power and these receivers will run off a 2S LiPo perfectly happily. And the code just looks like two instances of the library, each one attached to a different serial port on the Arduino and then reading two lots of 10 channels from the two different serial ports and at the moment I'm just writing those out to the serial terminal for debug. So it's time for a range test. The serial plotter on the bottom right there is from the receiver, so the Arduino plugged into that, and I'm going to take the transmitter and go some distance away and see if it still works. So first of all, I'm going to go down about three flights of stairs and see what we get there, and eventually I'm going to go outside. So I'm just going to stop and put some shoes on and unlock the door. We should probably give the sticks a wiggle and check that works. So, yep, still working there at the other end of my house, basically. You can see a single value as well as all the values when I wiggle the sticks. So let's go outside, and I'm just going to keep walking down the street and see what happens. So obviously, the rating for the receiver is actually three kilometres, but I'm assuming that's line of sight. Still working here. I don't have line of sight because there's a house in the way, and there'll be several other houses, so there'll be some brick walls and things. So there's the switch values you can see working quite well when I press one, two or both switches. And I'm just going to keep walking all the way down the road and see what happens. So we're still working there. And let's just see what happens. Yep, still working. So that's all still working perfectly well. Wiggle as I walk. And I think I've probably got something like up to 100 metres away, but now you can see the signal dropped and we've got those straight lines. And those are the safe values that you get when it loses connection. And those basically are the default values when you bind the transmitter and receiver pair together. So now I've turned around, we've got the signal back again. So obviously there are several other houses and brick walls and the actual brick walls of my house in between the transmitter and receiver. But on the whole, if I head back now, everything's reconnected, so I'm pretty happy of how that's worked out. I think it's going to be perfectly fine for controlling a robot dog or something that I'm riding on. Yep, still connected. So probably going to use that in future projects instead of the old remote with the NRFs in. All of course I have to do on the receiving end is chuck one receiver onto an Arduino serial pins and we can get the data out using that iBus library. The 20 channels is probably excessive though. There's not going to be too many things that need the two receivers so I can use the other sticks. I probably could have got away with the original remote and just sticking one of these orange DRX units on the back and then that being it, combining the same switches into those spare four channels and getting six channels of analog. One thing this is really useful for is making a budget transmitter and one with a custom interface. So if you're gonna crash your hovercraft and chuck your transmitter into the sea, you probably don't wanna chuck away 400 pounds worth of stuff. You're better off making one with a five pound transmitter unit, some Arduinos, and switches and knobs off Amazon. All right, I'm gonna publish the CAD and code as I usually do if you wanna build your own, and I'll put links to all the items that I purchased as well. And if you wanna support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, then you can, and those links are in the description to this video. And patrons and YouTube channel members get access to all the videos up to a week early, and sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up. All right, that's all for now.